All right, Shimanko. So um, I've been wanting to do this video for a long time now uh, because I actually got the Magic Trackpad 2, right? Um, so I got this about, I think, a month ago. I got it secondhand, but it's basically like new. Uh, but I just wanted today to show you how this works with the iPad Pro. And I have the iPad Pro 2018, 11 inch. Uh, so if you're deciding on whether to buy the Apple Mouse 2 or the Magic Trackpad 2, um, I would go for this. So I'm just gonna give you the conclusion. This is a lot better. Uh, it's a lot smoother and it's a lot easier to use because again, the iPad Pro is a touch interface. Uh, so it's gonna be much more native to uh, iOS 14.2. All right, so who is this video for? It's for people who are using an iPad Pro as their daily driver, um, you know, as their main computer, <clears throat> because I'm definitely using the iPad Pro and I've been using it for a long time. So again, this is for people who have an iPad Pro and want just a trackpad or a mouse because that might be a little bit more comfortable for them. All right, so let's do the unboxing experience. So look at this. Oh la la. All right. So now we got beautiful device. And then, uh, yeah, this is basically the device. Looks really pretty and slick. Got the Apple logo on the back. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's right there. Uh, then it's got the button right here to switch it on. And it's got the charging port right here. And then it's got the antenna over here. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about how it actually feels. Uh, so it's nice and smooth. It's got a glass surface, uh, just like any trackpad pad nowadays. It's nice and white. And it's got this metal finish on the sides and also the back is I think glass also or maybe like a hard plastic and the trackpad is quite big you know it's the size almost of my hand uh, if I compare a phone to it this is iPhone 6s you know this is quite tiny so it's like twice the size of my iPhone 6s all right so now let's get it set up so turn on the Bluetooth right here in the back make sure it's on the green and then we go into our iPad and turn on the Bluetooth on the iPad. Go to the Bluetooth settings. Try it again. All right, so we got the Magic Trackpad 2. So you see it's connected and now I'm gonna start using it. Uh, so it's actually working pretty well, right? It's really good, it's nice and smooth, very responsive. Um, and I think the gestures already work. Uh, so let's see if we can set anything else up. If we go to this eye icon, there's nothing to set up here. Uh, if we go to general, trackpad, uh, you see that you have the tracking speed so you can make it fast, really fast or really slow. All right, so I'm just gonna keep it halfway, a little bit faster. Natural scrolling, this is this means that you know if you use your two fingers to scroll, it's gonna follow your fingers. So I'm going up and uh, the scrolling is also going up. If you turn this off, it's gonna be inverted. You know, I'm used to doing it this way. When I uh, scroll up, I want it to, to go down. So I guess that's weird. And then we also have tap to click. And that just means when you tap something, it, it, it does it like a, a left click on a mouse if we turn this off so if we tap you know it doesn't open any of the things i have to really press it down in order for it to open it and let's turn on the tap to click and now you see if i just tap lightly uh, it's gonna work Next thing is two finger secondary click. So this is kind of like a right click. You can turn this off or on if you want. So the last thing we can go to accessibility and we can change the cursor. So if we go to pointer control uh, we can increase the contrast. So it's basically 
I'm uh, gonna make it a little bit more brighter, it's gonna change the color of the cursor. Then automatically hide pointer. Uh, so this means if you don't use it for a little bit, it's gonna hide it. You can pick your favorite color. I'm just gonna stick with blue and also you can make it uh, thicker. And the pointer size, we can change that. Pointer animation, this means that if you hover over something, it's gonna turn into the item like, like this. And this is cool, but I don't really use it. Trackpad inertia. This means that if you uh, move around with your finger and you see the pointer, once I let it go, it kind of keeps on going like a hockey puck. So I don't really like this. When it's scrolling speed, that's obvious. It's gonna scroll faster or slower. So that's basically all of the settings that you can set up for the trackpad. Let's try some of the gestures. Uh, so if we just use two fingers, Go left and right, you see that it's following our movement and it's nice and smooth, very responsive. Then if we do, I think, three fingers up, we go back to the, uh, the uh, tab view. So we have all of our tabs. Another thing is you, if you pull up, then you, you, you can get the fast options right here. And you can also double click and this is like a right click on a mouse and it's going to show you the options of the app and also if we uh, pull down like that we also get uh, the the tab view or the window view and that's basically all of the gestures also if you are in an app you know if you want to leave it and you just go down like that or you can pull up and leave the window like that uh, so those are the gestures it's nice it's working very well so now let's talk a little bit about the pros of uh, this trackpad so obviously the pro is that this is bluetooth so you don't need any wiring um, and you don't need any cables or dongles or anything you know you just snap the, uh, the switch right here turn it on and it's connected and automatically it's going to connect to your ipad or your macbook or even your phone no batteries so you can charge this with a lightning cable you have this port on the back uh, it's very easy to use Just turn on the Bluetooth connected it. it's ready to go very slick design very portable you can throw it in your backpack it's not gonna take up a lot of space it's actually very light I would say it's uh, like the weight of a phone also we have a lot of cool gestures right so if we're using maybe uh, let's say an app like GarageBand and you're trying to make music uh, the thing I really like about this trackpad is you can pinch you know so if you're making music you can pinch in and out and then you can also go up and down you know with the gestures and the left to right I think or maybe it works up here on the timeline oh there we go now it's working sometimes it does get stuck because you know they do have to do some updates to this but it does work most of the time and it's nice simple and responsive and another thing is the battery is gonna last you maybe a week or so I'm guessing uh, like when I use it usually I would say during the day and I use it about four to five hours per day the battery goes down maybe a quarter uh, so I can use it for four days straight without needing to charge it uh, but also that depends on how you use it and how much you use it so it might last you two days if you're using it the whole day or you could make this thing last probably a week uh, the cons so this is very expensive it's over 150 dollars which i think is kind of crazy but yeah because you can't really use this on windows or linux i mean you could but it's not going to be the same experience you know this is made for the Apple ecosystem. So if you're gonna use this, you have to stick to Apple. Also, I think this is way too large. It's like, I would say almost half the size of my iPad. Uh, and this is the 11 inch. And that's kind of crazy because I don't really need that much space. Like even half of this would be good enough because my fingers are never going like this far, you know? But I mean, it's nice that you have all this space. Um, maybe for artists or designers or people doing some um, creative work 
maybe this is useful. So now some questions for you. Um, you know, if you're using an iPad Pro, like really ask yourself, uh, do I really need a device like this? You know, is it gonna make my workflow much better or is it gonna make it easier? You know, and the thing that I kind of take into consideration is like, how am I gonna be using this device? And the thing is, I usually stand up when I work. So I'm on my feet right now, I'm actually standing up and this is a stand-up desk. Uh, so for me, it's ideal because um, I can actually prop my screen even higher, you know, if I have a tripod or something and then I have this down here and then I just look straight at the screen and then I can use this while I'm looking at the screen. And I can have maybe a, like a Bluetooth keyboard as well. If you're a person who sits and works more, it's just better that you get the magic keyboard uh, with the trackpad because then you can put it on your lap. With this, it's gonna be wobbly and it's gonna go all over the place. And then you're gonna have to get a keyboard for it also because you're not gonna be one of the typing on the iPad. Um, so really consider those two things and figure out how do you work? You know, do you work standing up? Do you work sitting on the sofa or the couch or the chair? Uh, because that uh, will encapsulate the whole experience of using the trackpad. And last thing that I wanna include here is that you shouldn't buy non-native accessories uh, for the Apple ecosystem. Uh, because again, Apple always makes new updates and then the device that you have might not be relevant if they update their iPad or their MacBook and yeah, it just makes things very complicated. So if you're gonna be using the Apple ecosystem, just stick with what they provide you with. And that's basically all for this uh, little tutorial and review. Hopefully this helped you decide whether you want to use the Apple trackpad too with your iPad Pro. All right guys, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.